Okay, 2.7b to wrap up this week. Um, parent functions, last lesson focused on shifting the four directions up, down, left, right. We learned how to use the inside and outside numbers to pretty much move the parent function and sketch a basic parent function. Today we're going to add two concepts to our, fir to our um, work. First concept is the negative and the second concept is the stretch value. Whenever we convert a base portion of a parent function into a negative, we flip it over the x-axis. I will prove it to you by actually using my uh, graphing calculator here. So if I were to graph y equals x squared, it looks like this. If I were to go back and insert second delete, because you see how the part goes there and add a negative to this, negative x squared, watch this. It just flips over. And it doesn't matter if I do the absolute value graph or any graph, the negative, as I just showed you, again, I'm not going to give you a bunch of those, but you can feel free to uh, ask me about it. The negative flips it over. So here's what we do now. If you have to do this, first off, look at your shift. So this is 3 down, because that's an outside number, right? Inside number makes me think opposite, so 2 right. And so I go 3 down, 1, 2, 3, and 2 right. Boom. The difference is, instead of going 1 over, 1 up, this negative says go 1 over and the opposite direction, which would be down. And I would usually go one over and one up, but again, this is the opposite direction, which is down. And so you get a graph that looks like that. And that is what the negative sign does. So again, all it is is just take your instincts. And when there's a negative, if you usually go up from your home point, go down. If you usually go down from your home point, you go up. Second example, this two is telling me to go two up. This four is on the inside, so it's telling me to go four left. So four left, one, two, three, four, two up, one, two. Now again, for square root, I usually go one over and one up, but instead I'm going to go one over and one down. For square root, I usually go four over, one, two, three, four, and two up, but I am going to go four over and two down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I even know what the square root of nine is, which is three. One, two, three, and there's three points giving me a pretty good idea of what that graph should look like. I wouldn't mark you wrong if you didn't have the third point, but again, the general shape is what you're looking at on that. And the general idea is, again, whenever there's a negative, instead of going up, you go down. Instead of going down, you go up. The key thing to remember is that the negative turns all of our upshifts into downs, and the rules for the parent function stay the same. Your stretch value is important to know kind of how the general cheap sketch works. If you take a look at the general basic points, that was my basic points for x, basic points for x to the third or second, basic points for x to the third. As I graph those, so again that'll be v, this was a parabola, and this was a upwards s. Just notice that the slope of the outside points is 1. So over 1, up 1, back 1, up 1. Over 1, up 1, back 1, up 1. Over 1, up 1, back 1, down 1. So 1 is your slope, and 1 is also the in invisible coefficient for what's going on. So what your stretch value kind of does is it changes the slope of your outside points. And I guess we should say rise will run, so 1 up and 1 over, 1 up and 1 over, or whatever. But the general idea is the stretch value, the number attached to your x, changes the um, location of that second point. So if we were going to do this, there's no outside number, so it does not move up or down, but this goes 3 left, 1, 2, 3. When I go to make my home points, this number is going to affect me by instead of going 1 up, it's going to go 2 up. Instead of going 1 up, it's also going to go 2 up. So what it did to my V is it made it more narrow. Okay. On this one, that 4 is not in parentheses with your squared. So that is an outside 4, so it goes 4 up. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Couple things we got to know. First off, that makes everything go the opposite. So instead of a upwards parabola, it should be kind of like this. At least from my experience, knowing about the negatives. Here's what I know, though. 
it's one half, which means if my slope is one half and I would usually go up one over two, I'm going to go the opposite, which would be down one over two and down one, I'm sorry, yeah, down one back two. And what it does to this parabola is it makes it more wide. Notice how the fraction made it more wide, the regular number made it more narrow. That's really all you're going to deal with in this stuff. And again, you don't really have to graph them for your work here, but you do need to at least make sure you know it. So whenever you get back into it, you're ready to deal with all that stuff. Here, your outside two goes two up. Your inside one, thinking positive one, goes one right. So two up, one right is my home point. The difference is, first off, I recognize it's positive, so everything there stays the same. But instead of going one over, one up, I'm going to go one over and three up one back, three down, because remember third power is the one that does this, and it makes my S-curve more narrow. Again, if you recognize the whole number, makes it narrow, a fraction makes it more wide, it slows it down. Pretty much if the slope is bigger than one, it's going to speed up. If the slope is less than one, it's going to slow down. And then the last one for this part here, this moves two down, that moves one left, right? So we're going down left and down two. It is a third route, so again, I follow the same three home points, but instead of one, I'm going two, so over one and up two, back one and down two. And this is a root, which means that it's kind of shaped like the square root function, so it'd kind of be like this. And again, if you notice, what it's doing is it's taking our graph and it's just spreading it out more, making it more wide. The key to learning this process is to, to ensure you have a firm grasp on the basics. The new information just requires a slight shift from the norm. Get some more practice with parent, with parent functions on today's assignment. Again, the reason why I'm, why I'm setting your schedules up the way they are is so you get three lessons, which hopefully you're starting on Monday, but if not, at least you have until Monday to take your test. But you got three days, pretty much if you're doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you then have Thursday as a day to ask me all the questions you want. You've got Friday to ask me more questions, Saturday to ask me more questions. So it should be setting up to where even though the material is moving, that you have plenty of time to get take care of any issues you have. And if, like I said, the thing you've got to know about me is if you're not using me to help you with your issues and I'm giving you so many days to get caught up and learn it, you really cannot blame me if I don't feel sorry for you if things go badly. So at least if you're using me, I know that there's an issue. I know how to adjust my timing. But if you're not speaking to me and you're not getting your work done, then uh, there's really nothing I can do to help you because, again, I'm offering as much help as I can in this situation. So other than that, like I said, get some work on this. you got a quiz coming up this week, and that's it. we got one more section to do, and then we got a test coming up next week. Good luck.